Hello, hello. So we are just making sure that everyone is here. Uh, let's just check and see what's going on. Okay, so. Okay, so we are there and working. Good morning, everyone. How are we all doing? Hope we are all good. Forgive the strange appendages that I have on my glasses. Um, I am testing them out to try and reduce migraine. So I'm really um, interested to see if this works. It's by a company called Syxus, um, S-Y-X-U-S. Um, so we will see how that works out. Um, so uh, yes, so I feel a little bit of a geek because they do flip up and stuff, but you know, Let's, let's avoid that and see how that goes. So we're at another Q&A Friday. This is the opportunity where I answer questions that people who listen to the show have sent in, but it gives you a chance and then it gets aired out on um, the next Q&A session on the podcast show. The idea is, is to uh, answer those questions, but also to give you guys who are members of the community an opportunity to maybe ask more questions around that should there be something that um, you want to know more or you can just sit back and listen to the questions that are being asked. Um, of course, it is open now. So it's open to anyone who wants to be part of the community. They don't get access to the content in the Alliance membership area, but what they do get is they get access to come to and listen to the Q&As or the, there's a list of book reviews that we're going to be putting out very shortly as well. So, you know, if you know anyone who might be interested in this, please bring them along, invite them over, and we can get them all on and um, rock and roll. So let's get started. So this is episode 110 um, of the podcast, and we are going to answer some questions, see how it goes. We've got the timer on, so a maximum of 30 minutes, so then you can get back to your day and um, make it a good one. So let's answer the first question. So the first question is from Sue from New York. Hello, in the Big Apple. Um, what do you think is your most important life lesson? This is a really interesting one because in the new year, I sort of sat down and looked at all of my life lessons and thought about, you know, I've got 50. That's a huge amount. And when I asked them on the show, they one of the challenges is we never really get a common feeling or or a great group of answers around one question because there are so many so what i've actually done is i've actually sort of culled the list and brought it down to 20 i tried to do 10 but i really just couldn't get it down to um to that little so um sue the biggest lesson for me or the most important lesson should i say not necessarily the biggest is a one that I call protect the asset. And I've heard a couple of um, different authors use it. I've heard, I've, you know, I've read articles. And to me, it just always used to resonate. And the, the reasons why I think it's so important is all too often we are consumed with the pursuit of achieving something. We're, we're you know, we're, it's, we own our own businesses or we're looking to go up the career ladder or, you know, really, whatever it is, that we're always going, okay, we need to go and do it, and the, and the chase is on. What also sometimes happens is, is that we are so consumed, or the, our want to sometimes please others, or our want to help others, we often do things to the detriment of ourselves. So, for example, one of the one of the lessons within this is what I call positively selfish. I've talked about it before, um, and it was a lesson that I learned by s simply watching air stewards, looking at you know what are they, how do they control those people? You know when the oxygen comes out from the roof, and they are told you know whatever happens when this happens, put it on your ma mask on first, and then help the people around you. And quite often there's a couple of things. Number one. It is completely out of my character to look after me first if I had people next to me, especially my family, because I'd want to put it on them first. And, you know, which was all great. But the reality of it is, is when you look after others before yourselves, 
you know, you can you can create some harm to you in some way, shape or form. So by looking at that and thinking about, OK, if I put my mask on first, I get the oxygen, I'm, I'm able to then support and help the people next to me. Now, when we take that into a life lesson side of it, how many times, you know, often we've been brought up to think, you know, you can't look after yourself. Being selfish is, is you know, it's, it's not the thing to do and, and all of the things that come with that. But often what I found is, especially with me when I was ill, what you find, Sue, is, is that when you are always looking outwards and always helping everyone else around you and always pursuing those things that are sometimes beyond sight or that you don't even know how you're going to achieve it yet, but that's what you want to do. What actually happens is, is you end up affecting yourself in some way. Now, for me, um, you know, you know my story. It, it, you know, for me, it affected me in a bad way, and because of that, because I didn't put my oxygen on first, ultimately, it had an effect on all the people I care about around me. It had effect on my kids. You know, for for example, with Josh, my youngest, I didn't really see him for a, I didn't really see any of them for a, a year because I was sleeping so much, and I didn't want to be around with them. And it took a long time for me to be comfortable with saying that because of the guilt that attaches to all of that but ultimately is I didn't spend the quality time there's there's memories that my kids and my wife talk about that I um have no recollection no no um no input in because I was completely in another place either ill in bed or they were doing it on their own because I couldn't be with them and that has a or has has and had a huge effect on me because of the fact that I hadn't looked after myself. So that for me, that's the biggest one. The other thing is, is if you are a business owner and you own your own business, whether you're a solopreneur or whether you've got a small team um, or any size business, but you are the owner of the company, you are the pinnacle, the point of the spear, you are that summit. Um, if you are ill because you are not looking after yourself in some way, or if you are not achieving that level of performance, that mindset that you need, all of those sort of things, simply because you are so focused exterior, what actually could that cost be? So, for example, for me, I literally class myself as losing six years of my life. Now, as a business owner, how many of you, could Lou could afford to do that? How many of your businesses could survive? How many of your relationships could survive if you were if you were seriously ill for that long? I was blessed to have um, Lindsay stay with me right the way through. Um, I know based on some of the people I've worked with in the past, and um, some of the people I speak to, um, you know, at events and stuff, that always isn't the case. Whether it is an illness or whether the business all of a sudden does bad, or um, whatever sort of peaks and troughs you go through especially the troughs the people that we we care about aren't always going to be there so what we need to make sure is is that we need to make sure that we are looking after us that's where positively selfish comes in that's where protecting the asset is so critical in order to help you steer those challenges that come along that doesn't mean that exterior people are going to be there and massively benefit but I'm a big believer that when you are in a good place, the people around you are going to be in a better place because they don't have to worry about you. Or because you are in a good place, you are able to hand them the oxygen. You are able to hand that hand, you know, handle their challenges, support them more effectively and in both a leadership role and both in a relationship role with family. You're going to be a better parent. You're going to be a better boss. Um, you know, or a leader, should I say, you're going to be a um, a better person all round when you are able to look after yourself, because then you can support others to deal with challenges, then you actually are able to deal with you. Now, I'm not perfect in this thing by any way, shape or form. It's, it's, I think it always will be a, a, a development thing. It's something that you learn and you adapt and you change to certain strategies. But I think it's always something that we should keep in our in our mind that actually we need to make sure that we are protecting us to hope to move forward so i hope that has been beneficial to you sue 
Um, also, how do you, what do you guys think? Have you experienced that when you're not looking after yourself and how that affects your business or your, or your personal lives or your, or, your, um, or your relationships with not only your family but maybe your friends as well? What does, that, what does that look like? Do you have specific strategies that helps you make sure that you maintain um, your um, protecting that asset as well? I would love to know. So uh, please leave it in the comments below. Question number two is Pete from York. Um, okay, you often talk about masterminding. Where do I start? Okay, so taking Pete that you haven't really... Um, gone into it, looked at it, or maybe you've explored it and you're just kind of like a little bit overwhelmed. So I think firstly, there's two types of mastermind. There's the ones that you lead on your own, self-hosting, or there's hosted, which means that you are, um, you are, or at least the, the, the way I categorize them, there's ones, the self-hosted are the ones where you just get a group of people that you know, you start the mastermind up and um, you see how it works, the dynamics and everything else. The other one is the hosted one, which is normally paid, um, subscription-based, um, which is something that I'm, I'm doing probably after, well, it's probably February or March, we're going to start looking into doing the Success IQ Masterminding. Um, but actually what that really is, is that's about you paying someone. They're going to host it. They're going to host it. You can't control who is coming in because it's basically, you know, who becomes a member of those masterminds and do it, but is led by someone, it is chaired by someone else who knows what they're doing, who um, hopefully will run that from a professional, you know, professionally, and you just, just then move through. There are pros and cons with, with others. If you've never done one, setting one on your own can be more challenging because it's where do I start, what structure do I put in place and all of those sort of things. And then the other one is, is when you do hosted, the challenge is, you know, let's be realistic. You, there's a cost incurred. And also is, is you don't necessarily control the group who or the people who are coming in. So sometimes there can be a, um, a relationship or a personality clash or something like that. So where would I start? Decide on would you like to do paid or would you like to do your own? If so, if you do, um, you know, like a subscription or a paid one, it's just about looking and seeing if there's people that do it on um, in your area. Sometimes you can do them online. So sometimes they can do online masterminds where you can hook up with people all over the world, which can be really, really beneficial. Um, it depends on the types of relationships you're wanting, whether it's, you know, you want your relationships local or whether you you're looking at really going on that global scale and getting different ideas. So that much will very much depend on how you want to do that. The other one, which is the one I prefer in one aspect, because um, I've done both, um, I have been very, very careful over the last, I've been doing this now for 10 years, um, actually just over 10 years, to create great relationships with people who I always have in the back of my mind is I would love to do a masterminding with them should that um, opportunity ever come up. Um, and what I do is, is, you know, there's, I'm currently in two masterminds. Um, you've, if you listen to the show, you've met some of the guests, um, the guests and the members of my mastermind. Um, and it's really important that you, don't I think, OK, let's just t step back one thing. Number one, it's not always the friends are the best choices. So when I'm strategic with looking at people, ideally, I, I'm looking at people I like and I get on with because it's a relationship and it's really important. But the other thing is I'm looking for people who are going to challenge me and stretch me and hold me accountable. Now, sometimes some of the challenges of when you are picking, um, let's say, friends um, so this is one of the areas in Success IQ we talk about support structure, is when you are looking at friends, you want to make sure that you're choosing good friends, and in fact, great friends who are prepared to tell you the truth, no matter if you are going to be annoyed with them. 
don't don't ask for stuff of of great friends if you don't want the truth if they're going to tell you that makes no sense please explain it more or they're going to say look you keep making excuses about this why aren't you doing it they're the types of people you want in your mastermind you don't want people who are just going to sit there um who are I don't know. Let's say, um, let's say, Pete, you, you you may be a really successful businessman. You do, you don't have much information on the question or the email that you sent me, um, but you have been doing this for a long, long time. You don't want a member who wants to join you simply to be in awe of the success that you have created. You want them to put in the 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 groundwork in order to make. Now that doesn't mean that you don't have an eclectic choice within your mastermind group. Um, I've been masterminds where we've had people who have been in business for a long, long time, very, very successful. And they have also, um, in the same group, they have had people who are literally just starting out. And the the um, collaboration and um, idea generation that comes from that knowledge doing it long time and innovation of just starting out and being part of this technology world that we're in and all of that sort of stuff has been truly remarkable so what you want to do is is just first of all decide the type of mastermind you want to do second one is is look at if you want to do a self-hosted one look at your network and go okay what three people would i like to suggest this to so look at three people who you would like to suggest that to see um you know the people that you get on well with people who um how are on similar interests you don't have to be in the same industry but in the same interest as you in the sense of you know motivated you know really want to be successful or have the sort of goals that you want are willing to sort of stretch themselves and be held accountable look for those sort of people look for different personalities so um you know um maybe an analytical personality or a very um uh a strategic personality or and a creative personality you know all of them when you actually sit down in the mastermind and go well, okay this is what i want to do again idea generation can be off the scale but you've got to pick the right couple of people they're what i call a core structure so you get three people who are the core structure and when you start adding other people on um every other member basically goes through an assessment with those core members just to make sure. So choose three people who you would love to sort of sit down on a regular basis and, and you know, strategize what you want to do with your business. They have to be people who you can trust. They have to be people who are going to um, understand that what goes on in the conversation stays within that group and it doesn't start going off and um, talked about with other people unless you have got permission from that person. Um, they are the key things. It's got to be someone that's going to hold you accountable and be, um, you know, be a hard ass on you if you're not doing it. Um, but and, and people who are going to stretch you. And I think is is when you can look at that and go, OK, that, that's how I will do it. Then you can either extend the group or just get the group going. And um, I think my, the, the, the mastermind that Simon Raybould and Dave Algio are in that I'm in, who have been guests on the show, that's just us three. And then there's another one with um, Richard Tubb, and um, there's four of us in that one. And you know, the 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 interaction is it's great fun, but extremely serious in what we need to do and the support that we give. And um, we very much, when we go into that mode, we go into that mode knowing that we're going to be challenging each other and really pushing us to the um, out of our comfort zone. So hopefully. Pete, that has helped you. Um, again, you know, if you need any questions, just send us an email. I'm, I'm more than happy to, to arrange a chat or something with you as well. Okay, question number three. Christine from Blackpool. Why do you recommend meditation? Okay, so if for me, meditation has been an interesting journey for me. So, you know, I'm, I'm a big bloke. I'm from the northeast of England. And there was always this thing when I was when I was ill and when I was you know just in business. It, there were certain things that I just wouldn't do. And 
meditation was probably um, meditation and journaling, which ultimately are the things that I sort of really recommend uh, right up there in the top sort of 10. Um, they are the ones that actually I get the most benefit from. And the, the way I look at it, it is, is very, very simple. We talked about in question one with Sue, how um, life is just so fast. There is just so much going on. You know, as soon as you wake up in the morning, um, I don't know if you're anything like me, but I've got about 50 emails. I've got messages on um, from Facebook. I've got all sorts of information that needs to be um, looked at. And I need to get myself at the, into the right state of mind in order to be productive and get things sorted. So by looking at that and by, you know, my morning routines and my evening routines or what I call my bookends of the day, um, it is really important that I'm getting myself to that optimal point. And again, I'm a thousand times better than I was um, back in 2007. Um, and it's always improving. And there's always bits that I'm working on in order to get there. And I think that's part of what success is to me. It's about that constant improvement. I think the Japanese call it Kaizen, um, which is that always looking at how to improve ourselves. Meditation has been one of those things because for me is we all talk about mindfulness. We all talk about, you know, that that's the buzzword that's going around that and emotional intelligence and, and all of those sort of things. And mindfulness is that practice of being aware of what is going on in the present. So what is present? What am I feeling right now? What am I, what do, how do I need to respond right now to that issue right now? It's very much about being in the present. And for me, mindfulness or meditation is the gym work to get me into that mindful state. So it is like going to the gym and working on my muscles. Um, mindfulness is part of that in the help of my focus and my attention to what is going on right now. Now, there are loads of research saying how beneficial it is from our, for our health, for our well-being, how beneficial it is to focus. You know, just imagine, you know, or, or you know, sometimes and it's really hard sometimes to adjust to that. But just taking 15 minutes, half an hour if you can, but 15 minutes just to go, OK, this is I'm just focusing on the present moment and you're just caught in the moment. All notifications are off. You know, I mean, I use my um, I use my noise cancelling headphones, so literally I'm in a cocoon. And um, sometimes I'll even put earplugs in with those things to make sure it's absolutely quiet, and I just allow myself to focus on what is going on. Uh, it never think that it's going to be crystal clear. It's you know, yeah. people kind of like go, oh, yeah, but I can't quiet my mind. You'll never quiet your mind. The mind will always be going on. But what you can can do is control it. So when things come in, you just kind of like let them pass. You don't latch onto them and bring them in and start delving into the issue. The idea is just for you to get, I guess, centered is probably the best word for what is going on. Um, now, I do that in the morning. I try to do it at the night as well, just to sort of get me relaxed before bed. But the point being is, is the meditation for me is all about helping me get clear helping me get focused not only on how am I feeling right now, but also in, in, in a weird way, although it's about helping me be present, it's allowing me to clear away the fog and just go, okay, what is it that I'm actually looking at doing? And then once I've done that, I'll then come back and I'll do some journaling and stuff just to help me kind of like get my thoughts out of what went on in that process. So for me, that's the, that's the really important thing about, um, doing that and I think the thing is as well is people can get so overwhelmed by um you know how do I start where does where does that thing what what is it I need to do two of the best apps are Headspace and Calm um they're absolutely brilliant they really do um Headspace especially has this fantastic way of making the whole process easy um and it's there is a cost incurred but it just allows you to get into the whole thing. Um, you know, I don't use any apps now. I, I've been meditating for that long. I have a certain set of music that I listen to um, that is called Life Flow. And there's another one that I used to use called Holosync. 
Um, that's what I use to sort of help me get into that state. Um, now, if I'm feeling really and I've got the time, I will give myself 45 minutes to to do a, to do the session. But it just depends on what's going on in that week and uh, you know how early I get up or, or how late I'm um, I'm going to bed. You know, in reality, that's how long it takes. Um, <coughs> So what you've got to do is is just pick something to help you. I think is when you're doing stuff like this, very similar to the journaling, you need to have a structure that helps you. So you either go get guided meditation. I think I saw Spotify does guided meditation um, playlists. So you could jump onto that. You've got um, Headspace. You've got Calm. There are loads of apps out there to help you with meditation because I think there's there's a there's a lot of people really getting on board and understanding the huge benefits that it can give you to to do that. So have a look at those apps and learn from them to help you. There's meditation as well as though I must also add meditation can also be um some people class prayer as meditation because it's it's really getting centered. They might read a specific scripture um, and then they they think on that scripture to an ex to an essence that is a meditation as well um some people will call um in fact i've had a couple of guests and I, I know a couple of people who they consider meditation is not having any technology on them and just going for a walk in the country um and just allowing themselves to be present in that moment connecting with nature all of those sort of things for them that is a very meditative state because they're they're not being um interrupted by stuff they're just going in so don't get trapped for um, meditation it has to be in a still room and everything else meditation is just about being present having some time with yourself getting comfortable with that and and seeing what comes up um you know that's still being mindful in my view anyway um, so that could be a, a, a useful thing for you as well. So um, there is one more question because we've still got another sort of five minutes. So I'll, I'll answer another question. This is from Josh in Toronto. You often talk about your love of gadgets. Which ones do you like best? Wow. Okay. Josh, that's like asking me to pick my favorite child. Um, <laughs> I love I love my tech. I love my gadgets. Um one of the things, uh, there's a, hmm. okay, so it, very much, so this year is what I've tried to look at is I've tried to look at, because, you know, I've got, you know, Macs, I've got, you know, phones, cameras, all sorts. So I'm, I'm going to explain what my thoughts were for this year moving through. And the idea for this year was about light and mobile. So I I love the fact that I can work anywhere um, to do my work. I, I I love that flexibility. I love to be able to just take everything and be able to quite comfortably go and do my work in a cafe or whatever. And I'm and I speak at a lot of places. So I think so far I've got about fifteen gigs booked in to talk through through this year. Maybe a few more. And quite often, what ended up used to have to, I used to take this huge case with loads of different things. And just to give you an example, like this is my this is my old MacBook Pro. Um, it weighs an absolute ton, and I now use a MacBook um, because it's nice, light, and nice and thin. But what I was trying to think of is, is is there a way I can be even more mobile? So. You know, I'm always carrying my notepads with me or I've, and I've, I've got my camera and I've got everything else. But can I do it in a smaller package? And so for me, it was all about that flexibility. There's some certain things that I always take with me. So two of the best things that I have is number one is my Bose QC uh, 35 noise cancelling headphones. Not cheap by any way, shape or form, but absolutely brilliant and i absolutely love them you can use your phone with them on and everything although when i was a kid we always tried to get away from having you know the headsets on like that um now everyone wants the big headsets so there's the there's definitely without a shadow of a doubt that and then my other trusty smaller ones the um airpods um they um my airpods especially go with me everywhere um but in the sense of mobility 
obviously my phone because it's my camera, my video. Um, I've got little um, microphones by Rode so I can hook it up. And it is also can be my podcast interview um, thing. Um, but in the sense of mobility, the big thing this year is literally the iPad. Um, iPad Pro, not the latest one, um, with the pencil. So that means I've literally got my, a notebook and everything I need to run my business. With, the, um, with this dongle, and there's another one which I haven't got to hand, um, this allows me to even take my presentations on this, hook it up to an HDMI cable. I've got a Bluetooth presenter, and I do believe there's one in the phone as well. Um, that's everything I need. Um, should I need a keyboard? Thanks to Tim Ferriss, who um, still is number one on I Would Love to Have You on the Show, Tim, um, is um, this by Logitech. It is the Logi, um, what is it called? Um, it's from Logitech anyway. I don't know what it's actually called, but I'll put the um, information in the notes. This is absolutely brilliant. Um, it is, it is, you know, it is really thin. It has got a great battery life. And it's waterproof as well. So, you know, nothing can spill on it or anything. So for me, they are probably the big things. Um, and then probably in the sense of, you know, um, working from a business point of view, taking is probably the square. It's just that little thing I carry around with me. So I can literally do my business, do my presentations, um, do videos, do podcasting, um, and take payments with clients and take notes and everything, everything in that. Um, and that to me is that definitely is mobile. Having said that, I can't say that the MacBook is crazy because um, is heavy or anything like that. Because there is a there is a gap for the Mac users, and I'm sure all of you uh, Windows users and will be rolling your eyes. There is a difference. Um, there is a gap. There is quite a big gap in using the iPad uh, or the iOS to using OS. Um, love to get them to sort that out but there is a gap there's certain things that i cannot do um on the ipad that i can only do so for the for the foreseeable future the macbook would be there as well so um but probably my best one um is the the um headphones um definitely has to be the other one i've got loads of other gadgets from you know i'll probably do a kit list or something for different things on on a blog post or something but um, they're really the, the main ones. So we have gone two minutes and 36 seconds over. I do apologize. So if, you, um, if you've enjoyed the show, please leave some comments. Also, don't forget any questions that we've gone through. Tell me how you, you know, we've talked about important life lessons. We've talked about protecting the asset. Let me know how you protect yourself and how that works with you. We've talked about masterminding. You know, are you part of a mastermind? How do you find it? What has been the benefits? To me, it's been one of the best strategies that I've ever implemented. Um, I first got into it when I went over to the States and trained with Jack Canfield for a, for a year. Um, you know, so let me know. Meditation, do you do it? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Did you try it? What is going on in the meditation with you? And gadgets, what have been some of the greatest gadgets that you are using to help you um maybe be more mobile, more productive, those sort of things. Would love to hear that as well. Don't forget, this group is now open to the general public to um, start building this community in 2019. It's a big passion of mine, something I'm really doing. Um, if it is something that you um, know people who may be interested in this stuff, just invite them to um, look on Facebook and go for Success IQ Alliance. Have an amazing day. Have an awesome week and wishing you the greatest success. Take care.